Well, howdy, you flea bitten varmints. Welcome to the iSpindle assembly video for the Jeffrey. Yee haw! <laughs> Welcome to Open Source Distilling, where time-honored tradition meets modern-day technology. Please consider subscribing to follow my progress on building a fully robotic reflux still running on open source technology. Today I am pleased to present to you the assembly video for my printed circuit board, the Jeffrey version 2.0. For more information, for updated assembly instructions, for the full shopping list contained in this video, I'll include a link to my blog post down below at opensourcedistilling.com. So what you'll need is the Jeffrey printed circuit board version 2.0 featured in this video. You'll need a surface mounted battery holder for the 18650 lithium ion battery. You'll need a TP4056 lithium ion battery charger. You'll need a GY521 gyroscope and a D1 Mini version 3 as pictured. There's a switch to turn the eye spindle on and off. There is a DS18B20 temperature probe. There are two resistors, a 220 kilo ohm resistor and a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor as well. There is a BAT43 diode and the associated hardware that was included with the blue breakout boards. Before we do anything else, we're going to remove the LED from the gyroscope and the diode from the D1 Mini. The LED on the gyroscope really serves no purpose. We don't want to be shining a light into our fermentables. And the diode on the D1 Mini, we're removing that as a safety precaution. If that diode is not removed and you plug in the D1 Mini through its USB port, you can provide too much voltage to the lithium ion battery and potentially damage it. And if you guys know about lithium ion batteries, they have this bad thing where they can light on fire and explode, and we definitely don't want that to happen. So we're going to break off a 4, a 3, and a 1 block, and place them into the breadboard as shown. Put the circuit board on top, and then you'll need to use something uh, to level it out. So I'm using a pH test strip container, but you can use something like some yellow post-it notes or really just anything you have laying around the house. Next up, we'll do a two block and a two block and a one and a one. Be careful when cutting these, they like to fly in different directions and they're very sharp. You definitely don't want to step on one of these, so be careful. These solder points are for the battery and all the power for the eye spindle. So we want to make sure we get a good amount of solder on these. One of the two blocks is a shallow solder. So we're going to take one of those blocks of two. We're going to press it down to make the short side even a little bit shorter. This solder is shallow to avoid a chip on the D1 Mini. Next up, we're doing the resistors and the diode. The resistors are non-directional and the diode is directional. 
when putting in the diode, you'll notice a line on the printed circuit board and also a line on the diode itself. Make sure those lines align on the circuit board during installation. You may also notice that the printed circuit board lists one of the resistors as 230 kilo ohms. In fact, it's supposed to be 220. In the official documents on the iSpindle website, uh, they're actually incorrect. So you can use a 220 or you can use a combination of resistors to get somewhere in between 220 and 230 kilo ohms. You don't have to be exact here because this resistor is used to measure the voltage of the battery and there is a calibration process where we're going to dial that value in anyways. So anywhere between 220 and 230 kilo ohms is going to be just fine. Next up is the switch. So make sure you solder up the mechanical uh, solders on the outside of the switch first, and then move on to the electrical connections in the middle. So we have another shallow solder, and this one is for the gyroscope. I actually went a little too shallow on this. When I press the pins down, I press them down too much. And uh, you'll see that when I go to remove the plastic part later, uh, the solders just pull out. So that wasn't good. You can solder in this technique. It works fine. I've done it before, but I'll go ahead and show you this other technique where we solder from the top. So the idea behind this technique is to tin one of the through holes and then very carefully install the, the pins. After that, apply heat and then you can get everything, you know, positioned just right. Once you get everything into place, just solder from the top like you usually would. I find this provides a very good solder with uh, you know good mechanical strength. It's probably worth noting as well that this technique would work with the temperature probe as well. Next up is the reset pin. You don't have to trim this pin, but uh, you can if you want to. Now on to the temperature probe. You can see I have a little bit of issues getting this into position. So maybe soldering from the top like I showed in the previous clip, maybe that's the better way to go. I'll grab a bottle of isopropanol, an old toothbrush, and I'll just go to town, trying to get some of that flux off. Now we place the TP4056 breakout board into position and just make sure it horizontally aligns with the circuit board below.
When soldering, it's always best to approach the solder point from the outside with the soldering iron. You don't want to accidentally heat up components that you don't need to. And time for the D1 Mini. Just plug that little bastard in place and give it a solder. We're going to install the gyroscope elevated slightly and this gives us a little play area where we can kind of bend it afterwards and get it like really horizontal later on. So just use two layers of these uh, of this hardware that comes with, um, I think it came with the D1 Mini. So place those on top of each other, place the gyroscope on top and solder it in place. When soldering the gyroscope, Solder the top and bottom solder points first, and then check the position. If you need to kind of rotate it, uh, now is the time before making the final solders. Mine looked good, so I left it where it was. Now it's time to install the battery holder. We're going to add some solder to the circuit board itself and don't be stingy with the solder. You can probably add more than what I added in the video. We're then going to tin the electric connections on the battery holder itself. We're going to start off by installing the battery in the lowest possible position. So just line up the bottom pad and we'll solder that in place. Please note that there is like a little bump on the bottom of the battery holder. So just double check that the orientation of the battery holder is correct before soldering it into place. Just get it into place and apply a little heat. Those uh, connections will fuse together and you've installed the battery holder. Now I actually went back and added a little bit more solder and you guys, you just want to make sure that this is soldered in place really well. It does provide all the current to charge the battery. So we want to make sure that these are solid connections. Next up, we're going to trim these posts off the D1 mini. I would also recommend that you trim the posts on the gyroscope as well as if you don't do that, when you put it in the pelting, uh, it's going to scrape the inside of the pelting and it's just not going to look nice. I put the battery in and turn on the eye spindle. Here I recognize that I have left the LED on the gyroscope and I also forgot to take off the diode from the D1 Mini. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove those right now. So I put everything back together again and then flip on the switch. And to my surprise, I see this smoke coming out of the eye spindle. And I am like 100% convinced that I messed up somehow and that I fried something. So right now you can't really tell, but I'm not very happy. But I got in there with a flashlight, looked all around, and couldn't find anything that actually looked burnt at all. So I'm not sure where that smoke actually came from. I'm wondering if it somehow came from like the inside of the switch. Maybe some of the isopropanol got in there. I'm really kind of scratching my head, but everything works and the eye spindle is working as expected. If you guys have any ideas on what may have caused that smoke, please leave a comment down below. Now the time has come to fit everything into the pelting. Just make sure that you go slow here and it's really just a trial and error process. Do a little bit of filing, try and fit it in. Do a little bit more, try and fit it in again. I would suggest when you're filing the two top pads that you try and uh, 
basically file with the angle of the pelting. So you get like a flush contact between the eye spindle and the inside of the pelting. And this will just help with the pelting not being scratched so much when you take the eye spindle in and out of the pelting. When you're doing any sort of filing, make sure that the eye spindle is completely turned off. And it's an even better idea if you take the battery out before doing some filing. The file is made of metal and has the potential to short some things out and potentially damage the eye spindle. So I'll pop up a picture just so you can see what mine finally looked like when I was done filing. You can see most of the bottom pin was filed away and the sides just a little bit. This particular eye spindle just happened to float at 25 degrees in pure water after offset calibration without the need for external weights or moving the battery up at all. We will cover 25 degree in pure water calibration in a separate video. Well, thanks for making it to the end of this video. Of course, if you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments down below. And next time your girlfriend asks you if you want a second helping of that pumpkin pie, you say no, darling. Just give me more of that opensourcedistilling.com.